Hi, in this video we'll learn how to solve for competitive equilibrium in the following economy. Suppose individual 1's utility function is x1 plus 2y1, individual 2's utility function is 2x2 plus y2, individual 1's endowment is 0 units of x and 10 units of y, and individual 2's endowment is 10 units of x and 0 units of y. So let's see how do we solve for competitive equilibrium. Instead of following the four step procedure that we have been using in the last couple of videos, we'll just combine all the steps together and try and solve this problem quickly. Okay. So uh, the first thing is that we're going to pick one of the markets. Okay, let's say market for X. Now I don't have to bother about market for Y. The reason is because I know that if market for X is going to clear at certain price, then market for Y will automatically clear. The second thing that we can do is we can we can pick one of the commodities and set its price to one. So let's say PY is one. So that's our numerator. Y is our numerator good. The third thing is given PY is one and PX, we can now find out what are the income levels of individual one and two. Income of individual one is zero times PX plus 10 times PY. So that's 10. Income of individual two is 10 times px plus 0 times py, which is 10 px. We have replaced the income by the value of the endowments. Okay. The next thing to note here is this, that the slope of the budget line of both the individuals is px by py. So in this case, it is px. Now we'll use all this information and try and figure out at what px, at what price of x, the market for X clears. So given the way the utility functions are, the slope of the IC of individual one is half and the slope of the IC of individual two is two, we can divide this problem of searching for the competitive equilibrium price into five possibilities. One is PX less than half. The second is PX equal to half. The third is Px between half and two. The fourth is Px equal to two. And the last is Px greater than two. So we are going to check in each of these cases separately exactly at what level of price of X the market for X clears. In the first column, I'm going to put the demand for commodity X by individual one. In the second column, I'm going to put demand for commodity X by individual two. In the third column, I'm going to put the supply, which is 10 always. Regardless of what the price is, there are 10 units of X in this economy. And in the fourth column, I'm going to tell the result of comparing demand with supply. Okay, so when PX is less than half, individual one will demand only X. And since he's going to demand only X, his demand for X will be his income M1 divided by the price of X. So it is 10 by PX and individual two will demand again only X because the slope of the individual two's indifference curve is two. And since PX is less than half, so it is also less than two. So he's also going to demand only X. So in that case, the demand by individual two will be M2 divided by price of X, which is 10 units. Clearly when PX is less than half, 10 by PX plus 10 is always greater than 10. Therefore, we have no equilibrium at PX less than half. Now let us consider PX equal to half. Well, when PX is equal to half, the budget line will coincide with one of the indifference curves of individual one. So that means individual one is indifferent between picking any point on his budget line. So that means we can put any number here, doesn't matter. Individual two will continue to spend all his money on X. So that would mean that now his income is 10 PX and the price of X is PX. So 10 PX by PX is still 10. So we're going to get 10 here. Now, since individual one can choose anything, so if he chooses zero, which is one of the choices that he can make, one of the choices which is going to maximize his utility, then we can see that there is an equality between demand and supply. So market 
can clear at Px equal to half. So Px equal to half is one of the competitive equilibrium prices. Now let us consider Px between half and two. Consumer one will choose zero units of x because Px is greater than half. Consumer two will continue to spend all his money on x and therefore will choose 10 Px by Px units of x, which is again 10. And since zero plus 10 is 10, again, at any Px between half and two, we can see that market for x clears. So this is also competitive equilibrium. Now let us consider Px equal to two. So when Px equals two, then individual one will necessarily choose zero units of x. Individual two can choose anything. The reason is because the slope of individual two's indifference curve is two and slope of budget line is also two. So the budget line will coincide with one of the indifference curves. So that means that individual is indifferent between any choosing anything on the budget line. So he can choose 10 as well. So if he chooses 10, then we have equilibrium. So Px equal to 2 is also one of the competitive equilibrium prices. Now let's consider the last case Px greater than 2. So if Px is greater than 2, individual 1 will choose 0 units of x. Individual 2 will also choose 0 units of x. So clearly there is excess supply of x. So we do not have an equilibrium at Px greater than 2. So we have found the competitive equilibrium prices. The allocation is the same, but the price that can support that allocation as competitive equilibrium can be anywhere between half and two. So let me just write it formally. So an allocation x1 star, y1 star, x2 star, y2 star equal to individual one is consuming zero units of x and 10 units of y. Individual two is consuming 10 units of x and zero units of y is supported by any px, py such that px is between half and two and py is one. Thank you.